This is another video in our course on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. And in this video, we're going to look at creating a, an HTTP server with Node.js and JavaScript. So, so far in the course, we've looked at basic building blocks of programs, essentially. We've looked at things like loops and uh, if statements and functions. What we're going to do here is kind of jump ahead of ourselves a bit because I know that you're not learning JavaScript just so that you can write command line programs that say hello and that sort of thing. So we're going to write a, a server program that's actually going to be able to respond to web browser requests. In other words, we're going to, the output of our program is going to appear in a web browser instead of on the console. And to do that, we have to use various constructs that you haven't seen yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'll try to explain a bit as I go along. You're not going to fully understand it, though, yet, if you, follow, if you follow the course from the beginning and you don't have other experience. But as we progress through the course, you will gradually understand um, what we're actually doing here. So um, don't stress out about my explanations here. They're just to kind of begin to introduce you to some new ideas. But the point of this really is to write a little server app. So you're going to want to either while you're watching this video or afterwards, try this out for yourself, type it out. It's really important and get it working and experiment with it a little bit. That's the only way that your fluency will increase. Okay, so I've created a empty file called server.js and I'm going to write use strict at the top as usual. Now, um, JavaScript code for Node.js, it can be packaged up into things we call modules. And there are a bunch of standard modules that we can use in Node.js JavaScript. So if I go to the um, internet here and I search for something like Node.js HTTP, we can find there's this Node module and um, that's what we're going to be using here. So there's a load of documentation here. And in fact, if you search for something like uh, Node.js create server, then you can find example code for what we're going to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in a little bit of a kind of more verbose way than what you would normally see, because it's going to be easier to explain it that way. So essentially, the, I mean, the word server in software development is uh, used in at least two different ways. It's often used to mean an, an actual computer that is serving like web content of some sort. So serving web pages or whatever. So it's the actual computer that does that. But uh, it's also used to mean a piece of software that can serve content of some kind. So in this case, we're, of course, we're talking about a piece of software. We're creating a little server program that can accept requests, we call them, from a browser and send back content that is displayed in the browser. So the next thing that we're going to write after use strict is I'm going to declare a variable and I'm going to call it HTTP. HTTP is actually what we call a protocol. It's a specification for how data can be transferred one way of transferring data between, uh, let's say, a browser and a server program, in this case. And the HTTP module, which is what we're using, is named after that protocol. So um, we're going to be using a standard built-in module in Node.js that can help us implement a server um, which works via the HTTP protocol, the HTTP specification uh, for transferring data. That stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, if I remember correctly. So let's say, now this variable could be called anything, but I'm calling it HTTP because that's the name of the module that it's going to refer to. Let's write let HTTP equal require, which we haven't seen yet, but we'll look at later, and round brackets and a semicolon. And in there we're going to write, or well, we're going to pass a string, HTTP. So this basically enables us to get a reference to the HTTP module. Now we can use it to create a server 
So I need another variable, which it makes sense to call server in this case, but we, again, we could call it anything. Let's write let server equal HTTP dot create server round brackets and a semicolon. So we're calling a function here of the HTTP, HTTP module. Now we need to pass a function to create server. And so far in this course, we've looked at passing strings and numbers to functions. We haven't looked at passing functions to functions, but sometimes you want to do that. So let's say that you implemented a button that you could click somehow on your screen. You want to pass code to that button, which will be executed when the button is clicked. So in that situation, you want to pass a function to a function. You want to pass fun a function containing code that you've written that will be executed when a button's clicked to the function. Uh, to sorry to the button to some function attached to the button so that the button can then call your code when it's clicked and we're kind of doing a similar thing here so we've got a server and we want to tell it what code to run when someone re requests data from the server by going to the appropriate url in a browser so we have to create a function now that will be called when a request is made from a browser to our little server program here so I'm going to use a function definition style here and write function. Uh, let's call it request callback. We could call it anything. And that has to accept two arguments. So we need two parameters here. Two arguments meaning two things are going to get passed to it, which have to then appear in our parameters. And I'm going to call the parameters again. We can make up any name for them that we want, but we should call them something appropriate. So I'm going to call them request and response and we're going to be using the response parameter here so we pass a reference to this request callback function to create server and then create server can actually call this function whenever we go to a URL in our browser for the moment let's just put console.log hello in there Hello. And we won't do anything else. Now we can start the server up. So um, let's write server dot listen round brackets and a semicolon. Again, we're calling a function here that's attached to this server object. So uh, we need to specify a port to listen to. So your computer has a bunch of different ports and um, each one of them can be used for transferring data between a browser and a server app like this. So we just need to pick um, a port that's free and they're all numbered. So let's pick 8000 because that's usually free. M most of them are usually free, but I'll just arbitrarily pick 8000 here. And um, we could also output some text here like console.log and let's say listening dot dot dot. So this, this function listen is gonna, is gonna return immediately. In other words, we're gonna, after we call this, we're gonna carry on executing stuff in our program, but it's going to cause our server software to listen in the background. Essentially, it's going to go into a loop that's going to listen for web requests from browsers and respond to them by calling this function. Now I know if you are a beginner, this is all sounding complicated, but all I'm trying to do here is kind of um, give you an idea about what's going on and sort of get, get you used to some ideas, begin to get you used to them. But we're going to be analyzing um, all this kind of stuff later on in the course in a lot more depth. So uh, let's now run this program. I'm going to write node and then my script is server.js and we run it. And it says listening. So it's running. And you notice I haven't got my prompt back. To, to actually stop this program, I have to do control C. And then it stops. Let's run it again. So the program's running. And if we go to a web browser now, let's try it. And I need to go. So I'm list, that program is listening on port 8000. So I need to type local localhost 
which is essentially the name of my computer here, colon, 8,000, so 8 and 3 noughts, like this. Wait, it's gone. There we go. Like this, if you can see that. Localhost colon 8,000. Let's run it. So nothing's, nothing's happening, but if we go back to uh, my, my, my web browser is sort of hanging as though it's loading a page. Yours might respond differently somehow, I don't know. But we have actually made a request to our program. If we look at the terminal, it's actually output hello. Now what we really want to do is send some data to the browser rather than just having it trying to get data and just hanging like this. So let's stop the program. So let's go back here do control C. How do we send data to the browser? Well, we use our response object. Remember, when we make a request in the browser, we call it an HTTP GET request. Um, so a, it's like a request to get data from this server program. When we do that, this function will get called. And the response object here allows us to respond to that request. So what I can do is I can write response dot write and let's output hello world uh, server or something semicolon and after that let's write let's do response dot end round brackets and this basically is going to tell our browser that that's it that's all the data that we're planning to send so now let's try this. So I'm going to start up my program again, node server.js, go to a browser and go to localhost 8000. And now it says, hello world server. Hopefully it works for you. I think actually um, Chrome is what I'm using here. Uh, it, it hides the sort of full URL from me. I think it's actually HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 but um, it only shows the localhost 8000 bit of it in this version of Chrome. So what we've done here is we've written a program which if we go to a browser and we go to that URL localhost colon 8000 that's the port 8000 that actually makes a request to the server program we've written which is listening on that port and our server invokes this function to send data back to the browser and it just sends back some text which is usually going to be displayed in your browser. It's possible another browser might ask you if you want to download a file and you're going to end up with a text file that says hello world server in it but I think most browsers these days will just display text data that are sent, sent to them like this and certainly Chrome does. Okay we'll leave it there for this video. The thing to do with this if you're new to this is Type it out for yourself and get it working. Hopefully you can get this working and experiment with it a bit. If you encounter any error, error messages that you don't understand, try to pick out the most important bits of those error messages, paste them into the internet and see what the internet says about them. But um, you, know, you might need to add Node.js onto the end of them or something as well. But you should be able to get that working and it's really important to type it out for yourself. You can see my code uh, on github.com slash caver programming in my node.js public repository but it's no use copying and pasting this you've got to type it out to really begin to get familiar with it and get the thing working let's stop that with Control c again okay so we'll leave it there for this video and until next time happy coding